Looks like we just hit pay dirt, Frog Zeus. Do -do -do -do. Say, Mr. Pons, do you ever get the feeling that we exist simultaneously in multiple parallel universes, completely unaware of the other's very existence? You've been licking yourself again, Frog Zeus. <laughs> Caught me again, Mr. Pons. <laughs> Did Amphibious Finale deliver? Well, the short answer is yes. It wraps up most of the plot points that the show had, gives mostly satisfying ends to the characters, and was really enjoyable. If we're simply talking about if the show was good, I can confirm it was. But that's not the question. The question is, did it deliver? Now what do I mean by deliver? Well, when you're writing the ending to a show for example, or just to anything, you want to make sure that the ending's correct. So the ending needs to conclude the story. That's the main thing. And for Amphibia, I'd say it does that for the most part. Now is it perfect? No. There are some obvious storylines that were dropped, some scenes that were seemingly meant to do one thing then said another, and just some disappointing parts. But that being said, overall, the ending is good. Let's start with the positives, the biggest of which being King Andreas' redemption. So often in media, especially animated shows, the main villain is either taken care of too easily, or worse, redeemed without any consequence. A good example of this is in She-Ra, where Lord Hordak just basically says he's sorry, and becomes a good guy. Or in Steven Universe, where the White Diamond blushes and all her genocide is forgiven, because... well, there is no good reason for it. Both of those shows are amazing, and I love them, but the way they redeem their villains is just not great, and it sours their respective endings. However, Amphibia was smart, and it gave King Andreas a good redemption. He apologizes for his action and helps bring down a bigger threat. He gives up on his goal of immortality, and loses his arm. He spends the rest of his days fixing the horrible things he's done. And that's really good redemption. When making a villain get redeemed, they need to not only fix their issues, but also lose something, and admit they were bad. In Steven Universe, for example, when White Diamond apologizes, that's that. She doesn't suffer for her actions or face any real consequences, just a, my bad whoopsie doo. With King Andreas, he helps take down the bigger threat, the core, the end shows that he really knows he messed up. He doesn't ask for forgiveness, but instead spends his years fixing the damage he caused. It's a solid villain redemption, and overall my favorite part of the last episode. Another great thing would be how the story finished itself. Our main characters end up making a sacrifice that, well we'll talk about that in a moment, but after the sacrifice, they end up leaving their new friends and family behind, and it's a genuinely sad moment. It's written very well and was an obvious yet amazing endpoint for the story. The reunion at the end was also incredible. However, the ending wasn't flawless, far from it. Besides not being able to wrap up everything, as most endings can't, even Gravity Falls didn't tie every loose end up, the finale in Amphibia made some, for lack of a better word, downright insane choices. The anime fighting style and insane stakes that come out of nowhere are one thing, but what really annoys me is... the sacrifice. Anne lays down her life to save Amphibia. And she dies. It's a really sad moment, but as is the issue with modern day media. No one's ever really gone. Besides that, however, the finale is really good. Sure, it messes up the color thing set up in season one, although season two already messed up that already. Honestly, w w why swap Anne and Marcy's color? Like, Marcy was supposed to be blue, right? That 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 was the obvious choice, right? I don't know, it's weird, but anyway, the show is great, and overall, Amphibious Finale delivered. It gave us everything, at least it gave me everything I was looking for in the end for the show, had really good moments and really good character arcs, and and overall was satisfying. It's also totally connected to the Owl House, and it's totally connected to Gravity Falls. Sue me, those three shows are, are connected universe, plus Star Wars for Seal. All four of the, no, Rick and Morty 2, all five of those shows are, are super interconnected. Sue me. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day. Like and subscribe, and bye!